This is my WanHow Duplicator i3 Plus, and it has some extrusion issues. A couple of weeks ago, we did a live stream where we unboxed this WanHow 3D printer, and we had some extrusion problems from the get-go. Now, on the first print, we were using PETG, and that didn't go so well at all. Well, after that live stream, I continued to test with this machine, and I realized it was suffering from under-extrusion severely. This is the PET Benchy from the live stream. The printer just gave up and stopped extruding altogether on this one. And here's the PLA Benchy that I tried right after that live stream. It didn't fare a whole lot better. It did complete the Benchy, but it's really full of holes. So I start taking things apart and looking around, but then I thought maybe it would be helpful if we walk through this step by step. The MK8 style extruder is notorious for all different kinds of extrusion issues. So here we have this video. So the first thing I want to do is take that extruder apart, take a look at it, and see what's going on in there. So on an MK8 style, most of the time your fan, your heat sink, and your stepper motor are all just sandwiched together with a couple of screws. So if you take these two screws loose, they're going to run all the way through this assembly and everything should come apart. So I'll just take these two loose. So your fan, heat sink, and a couple of spacers just come off all in one piece. I'm just going to slide it right here to keep it out of the way. I got it sandwiched in between that belt. And then your motor will actually come off the back. So while troubleshooting this issue, I started to print, and then I just grabbed the filament gently with my fingers. And I noticed as it was trying to extrude, every so often, it stopped pulling on the filament altogether. Usually when you see an issue like that, it's either because your extruder gear isn't completely round, or there's an issue with the idler not being round. So now I want to take the idler arm off and check out that idler inside there. So I'll just pull out this screw here in the top corner. Be careful when removing this idler arm, it is spring-loaded, and that spring can come out of there pretty quick. So the idler arm and the spring are off. Now on this idler, there isn't anything holding that case together. It's just sitting on there. So you can pop it off with a screwdriver really easily. And you'll notice inside here that all that is holding that bearing, it's not a shaft, it's just a plastic piece. So we'll pull that idler bearing out. It's going to be really hard to see this on camera, but if you look at it closely and you spin this idler wheel, it's not quite true. It's a little bit oblong, and that's probably what's causing our inconsistency. So between having this plastic shaft that probably has some give to it, and the inconsistency of this idler, there's just enough play as this idler turns to make the filament under extrude occasionally. And when you see something like that, usually the spring can take up for that inconsistency. It'll just have to press the idler up against the drive gear a little harder. But on this one, the spring is just a little bit too small, and it's not adjustable, so you can't increase that tension any. And that's why we're getting the under extrusion. So as a pinch fix for now, all I did was take this spring and stretch it just a little bit with my hands. And then I'm going to put it back in. And that should buy us just a little bit of time so we can get some performance out of it. So now I'll just put everything back together and assemble the extruder. So now we have a temporary fix for the under extrusion problem, but it is very temporary. Soon that spring will return to its normal state and you're going to start seeing this issue again. I did manage to print a Benchy out. This Benchy is much better than the second Benchy, but you can still see there's under extrusion, especially on the top layers. So we've still got a long way to go, but it was a huge improvement. So now, here's one of my favorite parts about 3D printing. In some scenarios, like this one, 3D printers can almost be self-healing. We have this printer printing well enough now that we might be able to reprint some extruder parts to fix this problem once and for all. So I headed out to Thingiverse and I found this adjustable tensioner arm. I like this one because we can probably use the hardware we already have for the most part. It's just going to let us compress that spring down just enough to get it extruding a lot better. So I'm going to download this one. I'll grab all three of the parts. We'll throw all those into slicer, and I want these to have the best chance of printing the first time as possible. So I'm going to head into print settings, and I want to make sure that my speeds are nice and low. We don't want to get too crazy. We want this to be successful the first time. This arm is nice because it doesn't require any support material, but we do want to bump up the infill. I'm going to set it to 30%. That should make a pretty strong part. And I've got my solid layers at 5 and 4, and a couple of vertical shells. So I'll export that. 
And because we want this print to be successful the first time, I'm going to clean out the bed really well with some rubbing alcohol. I'm even going to double down with a generous layer of glue stick. It's warmed up, filament's loaded, it's ready, here goes nothing. We made it. Let's see how our parts look. You can see they're still just a little bit under extruded, but a lot better than the other parts. These will get us by for a minute. So we'll take the extruder apart one more time. We'll take the motor off. We'll pull this screw out and take the extruder arm back off. We'll take off this cover again and get that bearing out of there because we're going to reuse it. And for this design, you're going to need an M3 by 10 millimeter countersunk screw. This is going to be your new shaft for that idler bearing. It'll hold the cover on this idler arm. So we'll set the idler in like this. The cover goes on top and your countersunk screw goes in here. Now this screw really doesn't need to thread into anything because the front of the extruder, that heat sink's going to hold it in. It's not going anywhere. Now we're going to use an M3 nut and an M3 by 20 millimeter screw for the adjuster. This will go down on top of the spring so that we can tighten it up. On the end of the screw will be this little button that we printed out. This will set in the top of that spring. I'm going to use a nylon lock nut in there just because it fits a little better. And then our 20 millimeter screw will go through the top. Once you get that screw started, you can put the cap on it. Now all at once, you can put the spring in. It'll go here to here. And you can use the screw that came with the original idle arm to put the arm on. It goes through right here. And there we go. Now that's a much better fit we have a much needed spring adjustment and that shaft for that idler is going to help out a lot. Now we can put it back on the printer. So the new idler arm's on and I can already tell that it's a huge improvement. It's a lot tighter than the stock one and now we can adjust it. So the next step will be to calibrate the extruder. The stock idler was so loose I couldn't even get a good calibration. Now we should be able to get a valid number for our e-steps. I'll walk you through that process. So let's use Octoprint for this one. Let's head over to control. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your feed rate settings in Octoprint are reasonable for the printer you're using. So let's head into settings, go into printer profiles. I'm just using the default profile. We'll edit this one and go into axes. And you can see the extruder is set to 300 millimeters a minute. I like to lower this down to 100. The slower you go in the feed rate, the more accurate your calibration is going to be. So that's good, we'll confirm that. We can save. Now make sure the printer is up to temp where you would print at. I'm gonna use PLA, so I'm gonna print at 215. Go back to control. So on the printer, I'm gonna mark out 150 millimeters of filament. You wanna make sure you're measuring from the same spot each time. I'm just gonna let the ruler set on top of the extruder and mark it at 150. Now back to Octoprint. Let's set extrude to 100 millimeters and we'll hit extrude. So after we extruded 100 millimeters, we're actually 10 millimeters short. We stopped at the six. So now we need to figure out what our new E-step value is gonna be. So let's head to terminal and let's see what our current E-step value is. Do M503. Our current E-steps are 110. So if you pull up calculator, you take your current E-steps, 110, you multiply that by the distance that you're extruding, so 100 millimeters, which gives us 11,000. And then you divide that by how many millimeters you actually processed, which we processed 90. We were 10 short, so we'll divide that by 90. Our new E-step should be around 122. This isn't completely accurate, but it'll get you pretty close. We'll do M92, E122. Do M503 again and now the extruder is set to 122. Do M500 to save it. Now once again we'll mark our filament at 150 millimeters. We will extrude 100 millimeters and this time we're really close to our mark. We're actually just a little bit over but I'll take over versus under any day. Since we were just a little bit over I'm gonna do M92 E120. M503 to check and now we're at E120. That should compensate for that little bit of over extrusion and M500 to save. Now we've got our new adjustable extruder arm and we've calibrated the extruder. Now it's time for another test. And now we have our best benchy so far. 
This one is a huge improvement from the last Benchy. All the top layers are nice and solid, no under extrusion. There is a lot of noise on the side of the Benchy, but that's probably from loose belts and something we might fix in another video. So at this point, the extrusion's looking pretty good. Now I did use PLA plastic for the new extruder arm, and if you want to print high temp plastics for a long duration, you might want to consider using something else, like ABS. But if you print ABS, you're probably going to need an enclosure. Or we could get creative. It is still summertime here in the Midwest, and the days are over 90 degrees. And I think I might know somewhere that we could use as an enclosure instead of actually making one. So we're out here in the backyard in the shed, and hopefully the new home for the hang printer very soon. Hashtag hang shed. That's a Twitter thing, right? Anywho, it's also the perfect place to print some ABS. It's well over 90 degrees Fahrenheit with the door closed, and there's zero ventilation. So I've got my Octoprint instance, I've got my printer, I've got a thermometer. Let's see how it goes. Now back to the basement, we got really lucky on that last print. Towards the end of our ABS print, our PLA idler arm actually started to get a little too hot and had some flex in it. So we got some under extrusion on the top layers of our ABS idler arm. Now it is good enough that we can use it, but we probably need to go back and reprint it after we get the ABS arm on. I'm going to take it apart and show you the differences between the PLA and the ABS. After I installed the original PLA arm, I printed another copy, which is this one, just in case. You can see what this one looks like versus the one that got way too hot while printing ABS. See that big crease there, it really got bent in that corner. And the ABS arm is missing the top layers. It will work for a couple prints, but we still need to go back and reprint it just to make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the printer and get it back to printing. So from here, I'll probably head back out to the shed and print one more ABS idler arm just to make sure my under extrusion issues are fixed once and for all. Now this isn't the only thing that can cause under extrusion. You definitely want to look at your feed rate, your acceleration, and your jerk values. You might be just printing too fast for the hot end setup that you're using. Also your thermistor settings. You might be reporting a temperature that's not the correct temperature. You might be printing your filament too cool. Also filament consistency. If you have wider sections in your filament, you're not going to be able to extrude that too well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I'll probably make some more troubleshooting videos like this in the future. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.